Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. It is going to be a really fun video. We are going to take our toolkit and talk about something that is really awesome. Um, stepper motors. Uh, this is something we were kind of leading into with our previous video. Uh, and by the way, I haven't forgotten about those that reached out about the, uh, the wafers. I, it's been a crazy, crazy few weeks. Just haven't really had the time to uh, send those out yet. But I will read those comments. I will reach out. We will get those to you um, in due time. But for today, we're talking about stepper motors. And uh, yeah, so anyways, we're going to use these for a project. Uh, eventually, hoping to use a stepper motor um, with uh, an Arduino and some RTOS stuff, but it's more about learning how to use the RTOS, and this is something totally separate. We've got a fun project planned for the stepper motor, but I just was thinking about this, and at first I was thinking about doing two videos, one that's really focused on the stepper motor and one that's really focused on the motor driver. But after a little bit of consideration, I just, I feel like there's already so many videos that exist about stepper motors and stepper motor drivers is like, can we really add value to that? Like, is that really something that needs to have another video? And well, spoiler alert, I think the answer is yes. Um, but this is not going to be a full description of exactly how this works. There's going to be some details that we gloss over because there's a lot of really great videos that dive into that level of detail, like that already exists. Um, and so but we're not going to recreate what was already done. However, I think that the way that they talked about them was just a little bit, I don't know, dry. It wasn't very interesting. It was very like, here is the physics and magnets and coils and I don't know. I just think it should be a little more fun than that. So we're going to make it a little more fun. And what better way to start Oh, than by breaking a stepper motor? <laughs> yeah, thankfully... Got these for really cheap. I guess there's the part number. Uh, I might throw a link in the description if you're curious. They really don't have a lot of holding power. But for what we're doing, they will definitely get the job done. And they were quite cheap. You're probably more familiar with these motors if you have a 3D printer. Um, it's a pretty common size for that. But we'll actually be using our 3D printer for the first time in a while to uh, get this project over the finish line. So the way that these are constructed is just as much impressive for like the value engineering work that went into uh, the system. Like, holy cow. Someone worked really hard to make assembly simple. Four screws go all the way through, and I believe this is now fully disassembled. Um, See, I'm going to sort of take off the back. Okay, no luck there. That may be a unibody sort of thing. Should I take off the front? No dice. I really think this should come off. I think it just needs a little bit of persuasion. All right. Uh, persuasion. Okay. All right. Oh, wait a minute. My throwing it on the floor tactic seems to be working. <laughs> I'm going to chuck this a couple more times. Uh, there we go. Ah, The rotor. All right. I've literally made this video for one reason and one reason alone. So I could tell you this. <laughs> How do you know that the centerpiece is the rotor? Because it rotates. That is how you know. So let's get this part one step at a time. I'm going to pop out the rotor. We're going to talk about that in a second. Wow, these magnets are strong. Magnets, man. They're incredible. I do believe that is press fit into the front somehow. So I'll try to show you why I think that. Um, there's this cylindrical feature that I believe is the center thing. Um, it's kind of pushed all up against 
pieces of the stator. How do you know it's the stator? It is stationary. All right. <laughs> there we go. Those are the two things I really wanted to say to you. Looks like we can't get this thing the rest of the way apart, but the way that it's constructed, you can tell that the person who designed it was incredibly smart. There are a couple simple and yet completely relatable problems that the designer of this system needed to solve. Look at this, and you can see there are, there's some relatively precise machining that needs to happen. This needs to slot into the stator. Likewise, the front side. The front piece, which I can't seem to get out for the life of me, is also pushed onto the stator. And this is where it gets kind of neat. I was hoping this would be incredibly clear and easy to show. If I put this in backwards, will it get stuck forever? Very probably. All right, I'll put it in the right way. This is why we have our block. Ah, get a little distracted. Right, so you, there's another practical problem. You have some windings, two windings, or two sets of windings to be exact. And these two sets of windings are wire inside of a metal enclosure. So what do they do? Well, they take a little plastic sheet and they guard all of the electronics from the metal. In this case, just coils of wire, but still, wire. Electronics, you don't want to get that too close to the metal. That's why they have this plastic sheath, and uh, they use that as a bobbin to wind the uh, magnets, or the, the electromagnets. Cool. So then you notice all the teeth. These teeth are critical to the functioning of a stepper motor, because these are the teeth. Oh my God, these are the teeth. These are the teeth that define the 1.8 degree angle. It's one magnet in the middle with two end caps, and you can see that they're offset. I can see that they're offset. Hmm. <laughs> uh, that is as far as I can zoom. All right. We're going to try to focus on the rotor. Excellent. So if I hold this very, very still. Oh, um, these are going to be magnetized now. You see, if I put my tweezers in here and I run it forward, I hit the other one. Why? Well, it's because one of these is the north pole and one of these is the south. That'll be that'll become important later. So, if this were a very simple stepper motor that didn't have teeth, let's just play an imagination game for a moment, and you'd be pulling a fixed magnet from one coil to the next, to the next, to the next to the next. That is how this would work. So they made it a little more complicated. Um, you notice all these sets of teeth on the outside, they're slightly and intentionally misaligned. And the reason why they're misaligned is to enable the function of this motor. I literally cannot turn that Oh yeah, this thing is super not going to work anymore. That grinding noise, uh, that is the problem. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, it's not how a stepper motor is supposed to sound. All right, yeah, this one's trash. Don't do this at home. Extra double for sure. All right, so as we're demonstrating this, I guess you can hear it now. But as I'm now spinning this, because I've damaged it by throwing it on the ground to break off the, the back piece, it was really press fit in there quite tight. That's very nice. It's part of what kept it together. Um, actually, if I could pull that. There we go. If I can hold it like that, that'd be perfect. So you can see that the teeth are phasing in and out of alignment. So as these coils are swapping polarities, this is shifting the teeth forward by uh, something like half a rotation every time. So that you don't actually need enough teeth to make every tooth 1.8 degrees. I think it's every half or maybe a third of a tooth. The The exact nuanced details aren't super important. Well, they are super important, but not for the level of understanding to use a stepper motor. 
Um, basically, all you need to know is your alternating polarity of these magnets. And because of the way it's wound, that advances one step at a time throughout the rotation. Sad that this broke. Um, I am shocked to see that it was not like epoxied. But yeah, that's basically how they work. Um, yeah, so we're going to kind of move on to the um, to the driver for a second. And that one we're not going to do on the bench because you can't tear apart an IC. Well, at least not, not yet. I can't. So... I'm going to to try to demonstrate how that works um, with a diagram or animation or something. We will try to find a way. The A4988 is a solid no-frills stepper motor controller. I've used some pretty high-end stuff from Trinamic Control before, and I mean, their data sheets aren't even close to perfect, but dang. After you resolve the mess of app notes, data sheets, and design guides into something that seems to work, at least most of the time, it's a pretty awesome product suite. Trinamic has got parts that can do PID, a Trinamic proprietary control algorithm, or an open loop operation with just a few register tweaks. It's pretty awesome, though sometimes I feel like adding all those features into one chip can bring on more complexity than it's really worth. But... That aside, they do have chips that will do trapezoidal or S-curve motion profiling, which is pretty awesome. Complicated and awesome. The A4988 is simple? Basic? I don't know. I'm trying to not be too hard on it. This chip combines two full bridges to apply positive or negative voltage to either coil of a bipolar stepper motor. Their block diagram really says it all. There are five critical control signals, step, direction, and a three-bit microstep selection value. That value allows for causing one step pulse to result in anywhere from a full step to one sixteenth of a full step of motion. For a 200-step motor, that turns into one step is one two hundredth of a rotation, or you divide that by 16, and well, that's a pretty small step. By toggling those pins in the right way, the stepper motor speed, direction, and open loop position can all be controlled. Stepper motors plus a stepper driver turns into a pretty interesting system that can do open loop position control in a way that nothing else really can. This pair can attempt to keep track of the location of a system with a pretty high degree of accuracy without actually knowing its position, just counting steps. That is the strength of a stepper motor, the simplicity to produce a open loop control system really fast. Now, if you want closed loop control and true 100% accuracy, this is not the driver that you'd want to use. You'd need an encoder as a part of the system. And then, and then you need to start weighing some trade-offs with like a brushed DC motor plus an encoder with a stepper motor plus an encoder, with a AC drive or a, a brushless DC motor, and an encoder. But that is totally outside the scope of this video. Why are we talking about this? Well, because we're about to use a stepper motor and this driver to perform some basic positional like motion control, relatively precise motion control, to build a, well... <laughs> That might sound kind of stupid, but well, whatever, I'll tease the project. We're going to be building a uh, controller to regulate temperature. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, yeah, basically there's a knob that needs to be spun that's meant for a human to interact with. And we're going to find a way to rig up a stepper motor to spin the knob instead. So we'll have to talk about things like the inertial load of a stepper motor and like the, the, the rotor inertia and how you need to consider that and setting your acceleration rates and speed curves and all of that, the nuanced details of stepper motors. If you're into, into that stuff and you're interested in that, let us know down in the comments and we just might be able to uh, talk about that together. But I think that's about all the time we've got for today. So uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for staying till the end. A special thanks to our Patreon and YouTube channel members. Really appreciate you guys throwing a couple bucks in the hat and supporting us directly. But most of all, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.